Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante and I'm with Stu Miniman. We're with Wikibon.org and this is Silicon Angle's The Cube, where we bring you the smartest people that we can find. We travel the world, we go to events, we drop in, we extract the signal from the noise, and we love to talk to customers, to get the customer angle, the practitioners who are in the front lines, you know, fighting day to day, bombs are dropping, they got problems all around them, and they're fixing them, and it's, you know, we love to cut through the messaging. The messaging great, we love to have the executives on, but it's really the customers that are making it happen. We have, we've heard, we're at the Dell Storage Forum, we've heard a very strong message around you know, the customer first, and, uh, and that's really always been Dell's heritage. My, of course, the, you know, the legend, Michael Dell, started his company as dorm room and you know, very customer focused. And we're here with Pete Keeler, who's a senior system admin at TechPlot, a Seattle-based firm. Uh, Pete, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, thank great, you for having great me. Great to have you. Uh, good to see you at this event, uh, the second Dell Storage Forum. Were you in Orlando last year? Uh, yes, I was in Orlando last year. Yeah, so I mean, it seems to be a step up. It's getting bigger and better. I mean, wh what do you think from a customer's perspective? Uh, it is fantastic. Uh, first of all, I have to say that I had a great experience at the uh, DSF in Orlando and uh, mm. wanted to make sure that I, I returned for this event uh, uh, here today. So, uh, having a good time so far. Yeah, good. Tell us about TechPlot. What, what's the company all about? Uh, TechPlot is a software that a, a software company that makes simulation analytics software and uh, data visualization. Uh, they they make the software that that really focuses on uh, helping scientists and engineers solve really uh, complex uh, problems, uh, and. Uh, that has been their focus, and they've been in business for about 31 years now, which is really unique in the software world. Well, so this big data trend, you guys must be loving that, right? Because you know, the, the squinting through all that data is really hard. Most certainly, one of the so so is it like Tableau? I'm just uh, try, trying to uh, uh, understand. Yeah, uh, it's 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 similar. It's uh, we have uh, uh, many of our our uh, customers are in the aerospace industry, yep. uh, and so they are trying to solve really uh, difficult uh, problems around. Uh, uh, how to make an airplane wing uh, more efficient, uh, how to uh, fully understand some of the anomalies that might ha happen with aerodynamic efficiencies. Uh, and so this is really what our focus is, is on for our customers. So what are the big drivers in your business? I mean, obviously invention, innovation, um, what else? I mean, what are the drivers that are affecting your, your technology? Well, w one of the challenges that, that we are faced with, of course, is this notion of uh, big data. Our customers are seeing that with the software that, that, uh, we, that we produce for them. And so our software is extremely sophisticated. And we really needed a sophisticated infrastructure so that we could focus on uh, developing our software in a faster, much more agile way. Okay, so, um so talk about that infrastructure. Well, in uh, late uh, 2008, uh, we had a very uh, traditional uh, infrastructure. Uh, and uh, I went to uh, one of uh, Dell's uh, channel partners, Mosaic uh, Technology, and uh, went looking for better ways to help solve this, this issue that I had about manageability, uh, especially for an IT department with very limited resources. Managing the data, the infrastructure? Uh, managing the, the actual uh, compute infrastructure and the storage services okay. as well. And so uh, I worked with them to uh, come up with a solution on uh, how could we have a scalable uh, infrastructure uh, that allowed us to meet the demands of storage and uh, compute services. So can, can you be more specific? What was the real problem that you're having? Your, your business requirements were changed and you couldn't, you couldn't meet those requirements, mm -hmm. the old alignment problem, is that right? Or? Yeah, um, it, it was the classic case, especially with our software uh, development group, that they needed uh, a lot of uh, computational power to have these build systems that would help uh, compile the software that they were building. And uh, being able to uh, provision those systems in such a way that uh, uh, would benefit their uh, practices w was very difficult in a, a traditional infrastructure. Benefit from the standpoint of your s the speed to which they could yes, provision? Now yes. doesn't VMware or you know, Hyper-V solve that problem? Uh, that made a significant step uh, and it helped us go in the right direction. Of course, we needed uh, the actual physical infrastructure to, to, uh, for VMware to live on. 
Uh, and one of the significant uh, components that we had with respect to to uh, uh, this new virtualization solution was how were we going to store uh, the the systems uh, plus the data that the systems serve up. Ah, so like a lot of customers, you virtualize your servers and then all of a sudden it really impacts the storage. Doesn't it? It's like a domino effect onto right. storage. You got IOs going crazy, you got less physical resources. So that's what was happening to you? So you're, yes. Your you're, you're storage, we've heard a lot about legacy storage. You know, we know that's a euphemism for Old Clarions, is that what you, is that what you had? Yeah. I, no, <laughs> no, we, we uh, had, to, uh, whether fortunate or unfortunate, we had not made any investment into uh, shared storage at the time. Okay, so, so you direct yeah. attached storage. Yes. Which is yeah. great, but it's not shared. Right, <laughs> okay. right. But okay, so, so, so you didn't even have a storage person at that point, really? No, you were just kind no. of moving the infrastructure, and so where, where did it go from there? Well, we really had to say, okay, if we were going to build out a new virtualized environment that with shared storage, uh, with a limited IT resources as far as uh, the actual manpower, uh, what were we going to do? What solutions were available that would allow uh, someone like myself to be able to uh, dedicate the time to uh, managing the storage side? And that's really where we made the decision to go with a Dell uh, uh, Equalogic uh, solution for our sh for our shared storage. So you would was it fair to say that you're an IT generalist? Yes. Uh, okay. Yep. You're not yep. a you're not a Lund management guru. No. No. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy Thank for you. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And so, so what was the experience like? So you you go from this DAS environment mm -hmm. in, in your VMware shop. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So now you have VMware. That's that's all the bit. Probably what three or four or five years ago. Was uh, that was yeah, just uh, shy of four years ago. So that was that created some some great opportunities, but also created some challenges, particularly in the storage side. So, so now you're bringing in Ecologic. It's a mm -hmm. new new world for you. How did how did that go? What, what was that like? Uh, one of the most significant challenges that we that we had early on was simply acceptance of of this new way of our storage and uh, computing acceptance environment of the by the users. Yes, yes. So that was uh, you know the, these were uh, strange new uh, technologies that we were leveraging uh, and uh, being able to uh, help uh, demonstrate how these uh, technologies would benefit everyone in the organization, thus our customers. Uh, was uh, something that initially it 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 uh, took a little bit what of work. What changed for the users when you brought in uh, Equalogic? The speed of uh, provisioning uh, uh, significantly changed. Um, w our software development group uh, had automated build systems that would uh, need me to provision them or to protect them in in a, in a very quick way, and that was simply not possible in the past. Why was there uh, some friction initially? What was the, what was the concern? Uh, I think I, in just for the lack of uh, being familiar with modern day storage uh, technologies as well as uh, uh, computational services. So the notion uh, uh, we we have a various a very curious bunch there at, at TechPlot, and, and they w simply want to know how things work. Um, to say that we were going to abstract out uh, computing services from storage and so forth uh, was very foreign uh, to them as well. Okay, so they just didn't want the change. <laughs> they didn't want the change initially. Okay, and then take us through wh what happened. So you had to, you took some arrows. Mm -hmm. All right, trust me, it's going to work. Yeah. It's, I'll stick my neck out. Mm -hmm. You know. You're okay, so your job's on the line. Yeah. Basically, right? Because you got to keep your constituencies happy. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened next? Uh, from that point on, it was really about being able to uh, take advantage of the new uh, tool sets that we had there and, and that we had available uh, uh, to us. Um, from there, it was it was being able to to. Uh, provision these systems and to uh, demonstrate how we could uh, protect the systems uh, in such a way that was going to be beneficial for not just our software development group but the the entire organization. Uh, at that time, uh, it was about six months into our uh, uh, transition. Uh, we had a neighboring building that burned uh, to the ground, uh, which uh, really helped. Uh, uh, the notion of being able to take these newer technologies uh, and and help uh, leverage them for our uh, disaster recovery uh, initiatives. Okay, so the the can you be more specific? I mean, was that was a, v a VMware high availability? 
capability uh, uh, now combined I, with equal logic or uh, uh, no it was a purely equal logic uh sand to sand replication is, okay. is is really what i focused on replicated to uh, off-site yes um yeah. a, a, a synchronous replication or was yes it? okay so so you basically well, so wh what would have been the in the outcome had you not had that capability well in the case and and let me get be clear this was a neighboring uh, company that 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 had this issue so we were we were uh, uh, um, looking at that saying how would we be able to recover from that similar scenario okay so it didn't happen to you but you witnessed no. it firsthand yes had it happened to you it would have been a true disaster right yes yes okay so so th you, your, your management your team they saw that neighboring company and they said oh my gosh if that ever happened to us so they immediately w knocked on your door and said, what would happen if that happened to us? And you said, yes. No it, problem, it, we got it covered. <laughs> yes, it most certainly helped <laughs> us uh, accelerate our uh, disaster recovery initiatives. Uh, that was the, the, uh, uh, the simplest way to make sure that that was going to okay, be Okay, so you were in efforts. sort of mid process of yeah. setting that up, which is great because so you didn't get snake bitten. One of your neighbors no. did, which is, which is unfortunate for them. Sure. Um, but you didn't have to absorb that, because a lot of times people close the barn door after yeah. the horse leaves. Um, so did you get promoted after that? <laughs> 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 no, but what, what we did do is we, we, we simply, yeah, learned the lessons from others there, and it was a great uh, uh, way to see uh, and to really uh, uh, demonstrate how, um, uh, how quickly something could turn so wrong for, for an organization. And we simply didn't want to be in that in that position. Uh, since we made the investment into the Equalogic uh, um, uh, family of storage, uh, many of those tools were built in uh, at a very uh, fundamental level. So uh, we wanted to be able to uh, really highlight those and, and uh, make sure we were utilizing them. So um, how do you back, how did backup change? Let me ask it that way as a result of this new initiative. Uh, for us, uh, because we had a very uh, traditional uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, we, much like everyone else, were focused on uh, serialized uh, traditional backups uh, to tape. Uh, and uh, there's only so many hours in the day and uh, so many hours in a, uh, uh, in a given week. And Bowing that, down to the backup yes, window. Yes, yeah, and that yeah, was well. one of the, the most <laughs> significant challenges that we had. Uh, plus, we, we run a very mixed environment there, so we were solely dependent on the different kinds of operating systems that we were trying to protect. When we were virtualizing our infrastructure uh, and then moving it off onto to, uh, shared storage, uh, such as the Equalogic Array, uh, that removed that element uh, of... of having concern over the specific operating systems, and it took the focus on to block-based SAN replication. Okay, and so um, so how do you do backups now? Uh, uh, backups I like to think of as, as, as far as uh, an overall uh, protection scheme there are localized um, snapshots uh, that, that live on the different SAN arrays. Uh, there are off-site uh, sand to sand replicas that live at a colo site uh, and then there are long-term archiving uh, methods as well. So you providing backup as a service to application owners on a sort of application by application basis or is it more of sort of a one-size-fits-all? Uh, since, since our infrastructure has really changed into uh, virtual machines serving specific applications and being very focused uh, on specific applications, I think it falls into the former there, where it's 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 per application. In okay, many so ways. You're, you've got a form of IT as a service. Yeah. You're, you're, so a lot of customers that we talk to, and may, this is changing, but historically mm -hmm. it's you know daily incrementals, mm -hmm. weekly fulls. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've got different RPO and RTO requirements. Uh, do, do people even do your? Uh, uh, do your users even have a sense of RPO, RTO, or do you take care of that? How, how does that whole yeah. business discussion occur? Uh, one of the things that uh, I have learned uh, uh, in IT is, is that you have to be the advocate for uh, these uh, kinds of discussions. And, and so uh, I am, am uh, always helping our management team 
better understand some of the implications about uh, uh, an organization such as a tech plot choosing to not address some of these issues. And so it's, it really becomes an education process uh, that, that I provide our management team and helping them really understand what, what uh, these things mean uh, to them from a business perspective. Yeah, because IT people say, oh, yeah, R RPO and RTO, those are business you know, notions. Mm -hmm. When you go to talk to a business person about RPO and RTO, they go, what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't know what that means. How yeah. much data do I want to lose? I don't want to lose any data. What do you right. mean? Right. So you're saying you translate uh, the notions of RPO, RTO, data loss, et cetera, into a conversation with a business person? So yes. how do you do that? You sit down and say, okay, you know, let's talk about your application. What would happen if yeah. you lost data? Do you have that, is that yeah. how the conversation goes? It, uh, many times, yes, and it's really not about what you can afford, but what you can afford to lose in, in, in these uh, uh, scenarios where uh, uh, even if it's not necessarily a pure a disaster, this monolithic sort of a disaster, but uh, uh, um, primary services being down, uh, what are you willing to give up? And that is uh, uh, something that the requirements are built off of those, uh, those discussions. So you have a pool, let's say, let me describe what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. So you have this virtual pool of capability, compute, storage, mm -hmm. you know, and backup services that can accommodate your application portfolio, and you allocate that pool according to the outcome of those business discussions, um, and you assess capacity requirements on a fairly regular basis, and you update that notion regularly, periodically, is that right? Yeah. Well, uh, um, a lot of it simply comes from experience of, of understanding some of these uh, critical systems and, and uh, uh, what sort of, of recovery periods we need uh, in order to maintain normal uh, business operations. Uh, but uh, in, in concert with that is, is uh, uh, helping our management team understand uh, what are the, simply the capabilities now. Uh, that is a, that's a conversation that has dramatically changed. Uh, the, the very fact that I can not only uh, protect the data, but protect the systems that, that serve up the data is a profound uh, difference mm -hmm. uh, as it was just uh, you know five years ago. What, what, Peter, what do you make of AppAssure? Is that something that you're looking at, or do you not have to look at that because you've got yeah. your snapshots you know, all set with the Ecologic already? Uh, no, in fact, uh, I was at the breakout session uh, uh, a little bit earlier uh, this morning with regards to AppAssure. So it's intriguing yeah. to you. So yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. I, I personally, I love the vision mm -hmm. of you know being able to dial up or dial down an RPO mm -hmm. um, based on the the requirements of the app, and it seems like a, a nice pickup for Dell. They, uh, yeah, they have some very compelling uh, uh, f features yeah. uh, built into them. Okay, good. Um, last question: Any advice that you would give to your peers that are looking at doing some type of similar yeah. initiatives? Uh, yeah, I think the, you know one of the the biggest. Uh, uh, things that has worked out well for me with regards to uh, our efforts in virtualizing our infrastructure with shared storage is helping uh, communicate the right message uh, to the key stakeholders, helping them understand uh, in, in very simple terms. It, it certainly doesn't need to be complex. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are the implications of moving forward versus not doing anything? Uh, and uh, the, the more they understand that side of things, uh, more than likely they will understand your position. I actually had one more question. You talked about one of your business drivers being you know, mm -hmm. agility. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys moving toward a DevOps type of environment? You know, that whole notion of intersection of application yeah. development and it's infrastructure operations? Th that is certainly an intriguing uh, uh, element moving forward. I know that uh, we have a, uh, a software development group that is, is uh, very strong into the DevOps side and, and uh, the notion of bringing that into uh, IT infrastructures uh, is, is again, a, a certainly a compelling one. Yeah, this, this, I saw somebody in the elevator the other night from Munder Capital uh, who we had a peer insight at Wikibon with uh, Wolfgang Gerlich who runs the IT operations at Munder and they're, they're a full DevOps shop mm -hmm. and uh, kind of exciting what, what people are doing, you know, creating you know, hyper productivity essentially sure. with these new methodologies. So something that, that we've been watching, you can, you can check that out on wikibon.org. Um, just just Google Wikibon and uh, Munder Capital and you'll find it. Okay, well Pete, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It was a pleasure meeting yeah. you and hearing uh, you. the story of Tech Plot. Thank you. Uh, keep it right there. This is the Dell Storage Forum. This is theCUBE. We're live from Boston. We'll be right back. <laughs>